So Tipperary, 17 points. Cork, 14 points. I'm here with uh, Matthew, uh, the GA statsman, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, look, listen, the last time I had you on here, it was just after Cork had beaten Kerry. It was the highest of highs, but I'd imagine after that loss, it's the uh, lows, the lows, really. Well, first and foremost, Aaron, fair juice to Tipperary. They were the much better team today. Quindivan, Sweetie, even Kevin Fahey, centre-back, unbelievable from them. As regards to Cork, I just think we look lost today. The subs we brought on even in the second half when Tip were struggling. Um, much of them didn't make sense. I thought Paul Kerrigan should have brought, been brought on for experience. And the fact we were bringing on, I think it was Mark Keane for killing O'Hanlon didn't really make much sense because O'Hanlon had some influence on the game. Even at halftime, Luke Conley being brought off. He was our best forward in the first half and you couldn't really understand why Ronan McCarthy brought him off. But, as I say, well done to Tipperary. They fully deserved their victory and they'll be celebrating tonight. Mm. Yeah, I think it was an injury for, for Luke Conley as far as I'm aware as to why they they brought him off at half time. But it's one of them things as well. Like, it, I don't know how tough the injury was. Like, you seen Tony Kelly yesterday. He powered on with the injury. Was it was it that bad of an injury? It's it's hard to know. Uh, only only he knows, and only Luke Conley and and the Cork backroom team really know. Um, do you think maybe it was a case of, I don't know, like it was a, it was a strange game for Cork to come into because they're a team that are used to being the other dogs in Munster. They've done they've done the hard work. They've beaten Kerry, and now they're going in playing Tipperary when they're, you know, they're they're the favourites, and they're a team that I know like they've done really well. Uh, minor and under 20 level and you have a couple of players in that team but they're not really a team that are used to being favourites are they? Not particularly no but um, I thought Roland McCarthy and Keane O'Neill would have gone into the game preparing much better than they did considering Tipperary did beat us in 2016 for the first time I think since the 1940s mm. we probably should have waken up since then even in the league most people forget this but there was a point between the teams and it was a close game throughout Cork scored three goals, really, to get them out of jail. Tipperary scored 21 points on the night. So I thought Tipperary, the league, generally, they were all lucky with their results. But um, they just lost every time. But they've been going to this game. They've won four games on the bounce. Limerick and Clare are tough teams. And Cork, I think, the lack of match practice really caught up with them today. I think we really only have had one match carry. Other than that, Loud wasn't really much of a test, let's be honest. Mm. And Longford, I think we could have done with that game as well. But, um, yeah, I think Ronan McCarthy would have been wary of the tip threats going into today. But it didn't seem that way throughout the game, really. Yeah. And were you surprised by, I don't know, like there seemed to be like a lack of confidence at times with Cork because... They, they, they always seem to be like working the perfect score. They were afraid to take opportunities from 20 to 30 metres. And Luke Connolly really looked like the only player who was going to do anything for Cork. And I think when he went off like a half time, like the alarm bells were really ringing for me at that point that this is going to be very tough for Cork to turn this around. Yeah. Um, there was, I think, um, Daisy Dolan put out a stat in the second half. Cork kicked eight wides in the second half. That is. Oh, it's absolutely dreadful from a team that just beat Kerry. Um, maybe it was an injury to Luke Connolly, we don't know. But you would have thought anyway, the players like Brian Hurley, well, in fairness mm. to Mark Collins, he did perform. He did take his opportunities, but players like Brian Hurley, Colm O'Callaghan, John O'Rourke, they would have been better shooting. But clearly, they, they were just off it today. And Tipperary, in fairness to them, took full advantage. Hmm. And I suppose, like, like who would have been your man of the match maybe throughout the game? I mean, I suppose, obviously, it has to kind of go to a, a Tipperary man. Um, but I suppose, first of all, maybe from a Cork point of view, like, who do you think, from the Cork side of things, like, what players maybe did stand out on the day and did play well, if any? Tough, Aaron, really tough. Um, um, I'd probably go Ian Maguire. I thought he won a lot of ball around the middle, more than he did against Kerry. But um, just wasn't enough today. And he was trying to drive the team on. But the rest of the players just seemed to lose it today. I, I don't know what it was. As regards to Tipperary, it's a tough choice. Um, I'd probably go Michael Quinlevin. He scored four points from play today. 
and he wasn't really at his best against Limerick much at, like much of the t- t- team to be fair but he stole up today when it counted and he played absolutely brilliant Kevin Fahey at centre back a bit cynical at times I'm not going to lie but um, he was outstanding he um, marshaled Colm O'Callaghan very well today and he went off a cramp I believe which showed the amount of effort he put into that game Evan Comerford, the goalkeeper, I thought his kickouts were dodgy at the start, but they he grew into the game and he kicked some very good, nice scores at the end. I believe he kicked one point and then another, which fell to Philip Boston to kick uh, the decisive score at the end. But um, yeah, I'd probably go Quinlevin as man of the match. Mm. Yeah, and I suppose in relation to Kevin Fahey, like he definitely probably could have got a black card for that high challenge in the first mm-hmm. half. Um I don't think it was intentional, so maybe that's why the referee gave a yellow. Um, but then again, like with the black card rule, it's it depends on the referee on the day, really. Like it's open to interpretation. And there were maybe a few cases in the second half. I've seen a few little challenges here and there where, you know, he probably could have got a black card then. And obviously that would mean a red. So, yeah, it, kind of interesting nonetheless. But um, I know you won't be thinking about it now, but like how do you reckon Tipperary would get on against Mayo? I mean, from here... A lot of people have Mayo as overwhelming favourites, but I suppose, you know, I think this is a, a lesson, once again, a bit like the core carry game that really, you know, you can't take anything for granted, really. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think Tipperary will be going in with a sense of revenge in their minds. Last two games they faced uh, Mayo, they were quite unlucky. Qualifier, the Mayo needed a dodgy goal to get past them. And then in 2016, the semi-final, I thought Tip were the better team for much part of that game. Mm. Um, no, but as you say, teams shouldn't take that for granted. Take um, favouritism for granted, really. I think the two teams that didn't do that were Dublin and Donegal. Well, we'll see Donegal later on, but um, Donegal against Armagh last week were just it's so impressive in the way they just put them away. Something Cork should have done maybe today just go in full pelt first 20 minutes and see where it goes. And even Dublin last night, I thought Meade would put up a challenge, but Dublin defensively last night were just unreal. Putting bodies on the line, bringing players back. And I think, honestly, the winner will come out of Donegal Dublin, that side. Donegal could shock him. We'll see what happens now today. But um, as regards Mayo Tipperary, I think... Tip could cause an upset. Mayo look impressive. But Tip going in as underdogs, it's a scary thought for Mayo fans. And um, Tip, as I said, will have revenge in their minds for the last two games they played. Mm. Yeah, and I suppose, like, in terms of, like, Cork, obviously, like, moving ahead, I mean, obviously, you know, they, they do have a lot of good young players coming through, and I'm sure they will be competitive in Munster for the next couple of years. But I suppose, like... I suppose moving forward, do you think this is just a, a massive blip on the radar? Do you think there's more maybe to look into this? Or do you think that, you know, in the coming years, Cork will be competitive in Munster again and they will be able to right this wrong soon in the coming years rather than this being, a, it, it is a huge missed opportunity, no doubt about it. But do you think like they will be there, thereabouts again in the next couple of years? I know I'm a diehard Cork football fan, but um, next year I just don't see it. Like Kerry will be back up with it next year. I, it was a huge missed opportunity. And um yeah, I don't think we'll get this opportunity again, if I'm honest. I think it'll be a few years until the young players were bedded in. You even see today some of the players, Paul Ring, Sean Meehan, Ty Corkery, they were kind of inexperienced today and they didn't know how to deal with that experience from tip forwards today. Um, even Paul Ring was dragged off early, um, which will do good, no good to his confidence. But um, it's a hard lesson for them. Um, what they'll have to learn from. Um, maybe the next two or three years we could do it. But next year, I don't see it. I think Kerry will come straight back into the Munster Championship and be competitive again and probably win it and try to right the wrongs from this year. Yeah, I suppose it's hard from this point, really, isn't it? Like, you'd have to imagine Kerry are just going to really, like, come back into the Munster Championship next year and, and right those wrongs. But, yeah, anyway, cheers, Matthew, for coming on. Um, I'll link your account down below, as always. Um, I'm sure you'll have the stats up um, after the game. Um, so, yeah, cheers for coming on.
Thanks for having me, Aaron. Much appreciated.